Hey there, Ideal Protein Nation. Welcome to episode 24 of the Life Possible podcast. We're going to call this a spring break edition since uh, people around here are on spring break, uh, as well as my featured guest for the day. Um, I know that we're going to have even more new viewers and uh, listeners today. So I just wanted to really quick uh, talk to you about uh, the Life Possible podcast was created to spotlight successful clients, coaches, and clinic owners who have used the Ideal Protein Protocol to reset their body, reset their mind, and reset what's possible for their life. These individuals truly have had life-changing experiences, and as a result, they're now pursuing goals and dreams they thought were dead and gone. They're pursuing goals and dreams they never thought they could. In fact, some of them are pursuing goals and dreams they never even knew they wanted to. So it's my hope that you will see and hear and connect with these individuals' stories and that you will understand that they're just like you, and if they can do it, you can do it. It's my hope that through this podcast, we can reach and inspire as many people as possible to, to take it full advantage of all that the Ideal Protein Protocol has to offer you, not just to lose weight, but actually to pursue life possible. Well, who am I and why am I even doing this? Well, I don't even know myself right now. Oh, there we go. Uh, we're going to go here. Oh, there he is. My name is Dr. John Barnes, and uh, you know what? I got to tell you, there's no easy way to put this. Uh, six years ago, I found myself fat, sick, and depressed, and actually, I didn't see a way out. I had basically given up. I thought that this was what the rest of my life was going to be, um, and I'm not exaggerating when I feel like uh, God brought me the ideal protein protocol as both the answer to, to all of my prayers, both personally and professionally. Now, six years later, I'm happy to say I am over 70 pounds lighter from that initial weight that I am in that picture. And uh, I am pursuing my own life possible. Uh, over the past two years, I've been able to return to the sport of triathlon, and I'm living a life that I feel healthy, vibrant, and alive. Uh, it it's my hope and, and, and my desire to show everybody that uh, through my personal experience and through this show, the power of this protocol is more what it does for us on the inside than anything it really does for us on the outside. So who do we got today? It's not about me. It's about them. Hey, hey, here we go. My featured guest for today is none other than Dr. Paul Wilson. Uh, you may recognize him. He's a very familiar face in Ideal Protein Nation. I like to call him an Ideal Protein Nation icon, uh, but he's very reluctant to assume that title. Um, so you may have recognized him from the banner that's on the Ideal Protein uh, corporate website or on Facebook pages. Uh, you might have seen his amazing transformation video that was released a couple of years ago through Ideal Protein. And for those of you who are regular viewers of this show, um, he somewhat appeared on episode 22 along with Mel Stack. Uh, she used the stand-up banner that features Dr. Paul uh, as the backdrop for her video feed uh, from her house when we filmed her show. He's a 1987 graduate of the Howard University College of Medicine, and he's been practicing as a primary care physician now in Maryland for over 31 years. Today, he will share his unique points of view about the Ideal Protein Program as both a successful weight loss client, patient, as well as a primary care physician who understands the value of this program and what it has to offer his patients as they face being overweight or obese and all the metabolic-related diseases uh, that they face, especially in this current pandemic climate. His message today is as much for the potential patient who might make the decision to change their lifestyle with Ideal Protein as it is for the practicing physicians out there. Uh, he hopes to change their view of their overweight clients. He, help, he wants them to understand that weight loss is health care that these patients deserve, and he wants them to seek out and refer those clients to their local Ideal Protein clinics. 
So without further ado, I would like to introduce all of you to Dr. Paul Wilson. Hey, Dr. Paul, how are you? Hi, I'm doing great. Hey, so uh, I, real quick, right out of the gate, I, I want you to tell everybody where you are filming on location, if you will, and, and what studio you're using. I'm using the studio of my motorhome. That was motorhome. In my video. Um, I'm in the Myrtle Beach area in South Carolina, enjoying the bright sunshine and the palm trees. It's a little yeah. cool for the beach, but I'm still in, I'm enjoying it. Wonderful, wonderful. Hey, Megan Davis, if you're out there, Dr. Paul's in the area. Look out, he might just drop by. <laughs> hey, so, um, you know, one of my favorite uh, Ideal Protein clips of you is actually the most recent one that they just put out, a wonderful two-minute video uh, that kind of summarizes the whole program. And they spotlight a couple of uh, successful clients. And um, if I were to ask you, Dr. Paul, what what has been your experience with the Ideal Protein program and what has it meant to you? How would you sum that up? I would say, as I did in the video, that it may sound melodramatic, but Ideal Protein actually saved my life. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing. We're going to talk about that in depth today um, because this is a story that I think a lot of people need to hear. Uh, and, and there are parts of it that I didn't even know until we started working on the show two weeks ago. Um, back in 2016, though, is, is when you started your Ideal Protein journey. And, and what was the starting weight that you, you started the journey at? I started at 420 pounds. 420 pounds. And from, from start to finish, that, uh, that initial weight loss was how many pounds? Uh, nope. Right, right at you froze right at the punchline. Hang on, 185 pounds, 185 pounds, 185 pounds. Wow, that's unbelievable. So, yeah, we're going to talk about how you got there in the first place and uh, what it was like going through the program as a patient yourself, and then uh, what your life is like now, both uh, as a practicing physician as well as what you are doing with your life possible. Uh, let's let's kind of go back to the beginning and let's let's talk a little bit about um, your ups and downs as far as uh, your struggle with weight and dieting. Well, I started out as a youngster being pretty slim, you know, until I hit puberty. So that picture in the graduation cap and gown was my eighth grade graduation. I was 13, okay. and that's a hallmark because that's the time in my life where they people first started calling me fat and fatso. Gotcha. Because I was chubby, I was smart, I was not athletic, and I was a target. And so that's where I trace it back to where my struggles began. Mm -hmm. So through my high school years, um, I went through several growth spurts. And so I slimmed down some. So I would say, I, you know, I was of normal weight. I was under 200 pounds when I went to college. Mm -hmm. um, and then through college, um, the stress of completing college, I lost another 20 pounds, like in my senior year of college. And I was skinny again. And I liked being skinny. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about waist size 32 and I'm five, yeah. 10 and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I kind of got, uh, you know, used to that, liking that. However, I did medical school next. Okay. And the picture in the center in cap and gown is medical school graduation, 1987. I was 25 years old. And as you can see, my face is full again because I gained back that 20 pounds plus more. I think I was over 200 pounds in that picture, mm -hmm. over 200 pounds. But, you know, I gained like 40 or 50 pounds. Wow. Medical school. Wow. 
So then I started residency and um, after my first year of residency, I got married. So uh, my wedding picture there, that's my wife. Yeah, yeah. My pastor. Um, I went on the cabbage soup diet. The cabbage soup diet. <laughs> it, I always was looking for the next diet that was going to get me slim again. Yep. And uh, the plan was to wear white. And so I didn't want to look like a white elephant. So no, I went on a diet um, <laughs> that, that I was recommended. And I lost weight so fast on that diet because I was one who could stick to a diet now. Yeah. Um, I, you know, you go and you get measured for your tux and then, you know, in advance and you pick out the one you want to wear and then you get measured and then you go back the week of to pick up the tux. So I told the guy that I lost a lot of weight. I needed a smaller size. I don't think he believed me because everybody says that, right? Yeah, right. He didn't know he was talking to. I took <laughs> those pants home and because I carried my weight in my in my tummy. And I took the pants home and I could slide them down over my hips with them fastened. They were so big. Sure, sure. And so I, the jacket was fine. It was the pants. I had to get a smaller size. Yeah. So um, I, uh, you know, that was my first big weight loss on a specific diet. The weight loss I, I had in college was just stress not eating. But this right, was a right. diet. So, yeah. you know, uh, you know, got married, and you know, my uh, my wife was pregnant with our first child, uh, Rebecca, and she, and so I gained thirty pounds during the pregnancy. You gained thirty pounds. I did. <laughs> Funny I, how that happens to us guys. I eat my feelings, and I definitely was eating my feelings because uh, I am family medicine trained, uh, proud graduate of the Georgetown University uh, family medicine program. Uh, and uh, I did in family medicine, traditional family medicine, you train in obstetrics. Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay. I did my fair share of babies and I was actually pretty good at it, but you know, family doctors don't deliver babies. Uh, yeah. It's kind of in the past. Anyway, you know, when it was my baby, I was a nervous wreck. Yeah. Right. You know, all <laughs> of the things that could go wrong. <laughs> And so I ate my feelings and I gained 30 pounds. Wow. wow. So after Rebecca was born, I did Slim Fast. Oh, there I, you go. I could have done a Slim Fast commercial because I went, my weight drops, you know, because, you know, most reduced calorie diets will work if you stick to it. And when I stuck, I stuck to it. Okay. Well, you you know, I'm going to stop you here because during our pre-interviews, we talked about this a little bit. Um, you don't suffer from a lack of willpower. No. Like you said, when you when you put your mind to something, you're going to do it, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, right? Especially as it related to my weight. Yeah. I just couldn't keep it off. Well, and the other part of it was, too, you shared with me uh, something that will curl everybody's hair when you were saying that you were judging how well you were doing uh, on your diet by how hungry you actually were. And that was a good thing. Yeah, because I thought that not eating was the solution to my problem. Yep. I thought food was the enemy. So if I was hungry, that meant I had a good day. Yeah, right. And I didn't overeat. That was my only way to judge whether or not I'd eaten too much. And so, you know, I was constantly hungry. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, but I, I dealt with it because the weight was coming down. And uh, the thing that I didn't know uh, and didn't put together that I wasn't just losing fat. I was losing muscle. And I was never a muscular person. Right. So, Oh, that was what was setting me up to gain it back because muscle helps you burn calories. Yep. So I was, after the Slim Fast diet, I was what I would call skinny fat. I was still kind of chubby looking, but I was smaller, mm -hmm. but still chubby looking. Okay? Yeah. And um, I became a dad. 
that's that the picture in the middle, my life's greatest accomplishments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, you can see now I was recounting the Slim Fast story was when Rebecca, who's my oldest there, uh, she was a little girl. She was a little baby. OK, when I did Slim Fast. Yep. You see, yep. by the time she's, you know, 11 or 12, somewhere in there, she, I'm, I'm, I'm heavy again. Yeah, you're gaining it back. Okay, I gained it back. Now, um, my son Paul is the, is the little one in the middle picture. You can see him on the right with me. Now, between that, and you can see the time with looking at him, okay? Yeah, yeah. I worked out with a personal trainer. Now, he really helped me because he did give me advice about nutrition. My first time mm -hmm. really kind of incorporating good nutrition into my program to lose weight. And I was amazed at the fact that I had come down in size, but not much in weight. Mm -hmm. Because the program that he had put together, and we did like a boot camp thing, all of us you know, wanted to slim down. We didn't want to bulk up. So right. he fashioned the exercise so that um, it would help slim us down, but not bulk up our muscles. However, mm -hmm. I did build muscle because he did make sure that we had adequate protein in our diets. That's Plus, awesome. The intensity of the workout required me to eat because if I worked out with him and I didn't eat, um, you pass out. Yeah, you know, right. Yes. Okay. And yep. it brings up an analogy that I, uh, I use with my patients who get, are frustrated because they work out like a champ. You know, they're mm -hmm. in the gym three or four days a week and nothing's happening. You know, they're not getting rid of the fat. And I tell them, you know, um, uh, fat on your body is like having a gas can in the trunk of your car. The gas is in the car, but it's not accessible to the engine. Yeah, brilliant. So carrying it around with you. Yep. Okay? And that's a problem. You have to get the gas in the tank to, to get the metabolism up to burn so that you can begin to go into your fat stores and use fat for fuel. Yes. I mean, that was the, uh, you know, the connection that I made. And I know because I tend to um, save clothes because I don't wear them out because I don't stay small enough to wear them out. <laughs> you know, getting clothes back then, this was my early 40s. This was almost 20 years ago. Um, yep. my, it's 24. Um, right. I was getting in clothes, but I was 20 to 25 pounds heavier. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had built muscle on my frame working out with him. I worked out with him for two years. And that was the longest I stayed slim because I was getting up at 4.30 in the morning to meet him at the gym at 5 to work out for an hour before yep. I went to work. I did it three days a week. Yep. For two years, I paid him a dollar a minute. <laughs> you do the math. I put mm -hmm. my money where my mouth was. Okay. Because I was determined that I was going to be slim again. Yep. So I did what it took. And um, between that time and that picture to the right, you can see that I was heavy again. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's, it's a struggle and it's very frustrating for a lot of people. But when we use exercise as one of the primary methods for losing and or even maintaining weight, it's, if it's if it's unsustainable, if we stop, you know, what, what's going to be the, the ultimate result there, right? The other thing that I know is that exercise has to be fashioned in a way that helps you meet the goal, whatever goal you have. Boom. And that's yep. the thing. It's one of my pet peeves about doctors when they tell their patients to eat right and exercise well, I know we're going to talk about the nutrition part, but exercise how? Yeah, right. There's one way to exercise to get one result, another way to exercise to get another result. That's why the personal trainer was so valuable to me and helped me meet goals because he fashioned the exercise to how I was responding. And he yep. made adjustments as I went along. The importance of a coach. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
So, yeah. So then, uh, like you said, you started to go through, especially in your early 40s, uh, just consistent weight gain. Uh, and and I started basically, it started, it started coming back. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got to the point where you reached kind of, you reached your peak. That I was, um, that's, there's my son, Paul, on the right. Um, he, uh, I'm very proud to say, is an Eagle Scout. And that's, that was his 18th birthday, and he made Eagle Scout. Yeah, look at all those patches. Yeah, yeah, he, he's, uh, he is truly the embodiment of what it means to be an Eagle Scout. Oh, and uh, so I was really proud. Um, but if you look at the look of my face, to me, I see somebody with straining the smile. Yeah. Um, it was it was a hard time for me. Yeah. The picture on the left is me and my brother and my sisters and my mom. That was her 80th birthday. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yep. That's that is uh, September 19th, um, 2015. Three months before I started on IP. Gotcha. Uh, And it was my mom, a couple of months after this picture was taken, who helped me change on the inside. Because the guy on the right had pretty much given up. Yeah. And I stopped pushing back. I always pushed back. I never let it get so far out of hand. Yep. And because of my genetic predisposition for obesity and culturally not understanding, you know, that there is something called a portion size because we grew up (laughs) and then eating to uh, help my feelings and deal with what I call my my midlife crisis, because uh, I say my midlife crisis and the doctor crisis happened at the same time. Because my profession has changed. Yeah. yeah. That was difficult for me because I was trained by old school family doctors. Back in the 90s, I made house calls. Yep. Because I uh, thought that's what I was supposed to do. I'm a family doctor. You right. Know? And so I think that that was where I um, was using food to help me to cope with, with my feelings and, and my disappointment in how my career had turned out, you know, because I hit that 25 year mark, 2015 was 25 years out of uh, residency. Mm -hmm. And this didn't turn out the way I thought it was going to. And you know, and I'm going to stop you here too, Paul, because I think this is so poignant. Um, this isn't even in our outline, but I was hoping that was going to come up because we talked about this uh, previously. You know, when you go to med school and you, you're becoming a doctor, you go into it with a certain uh, idea of why you're doing this, right? You're doing this to help your patients, to save humanity, to, to do and be all these things. And, um, you know, whether it's med school or chiropractic school and somewhere along the way, practice has a way of, of wearing you down and what you thought it was all going to be is, is not really how it turns out. And we share that. We, we share that part of our story because that was, it was the anxiety and the depression of, of coming to grips with that reality that got us both to our, our obesity. Because medicine has morphed into a business. And it's never going back the way that it was. So that's where I had to change my attitude and not take it out on myself, you know, and not uh, use a very ineffective coping mechanism. But it was my mom, who is a registered nurse, old school, who kind of snapped me back in a moment into uh, reality. Because, you know, Dr. Tran says, you don't lose weight to love yourself. You love yourself, so you lose weight. 
And when you have people around you, especially your mom, who yep. loves you, and, you know, we are spiritual beings. It's a spiritual thing. Yeah. And in a moment, she I went to visit her, and she grabbed me, and she was just unconsolable because she was so worried about me. And that that display of her love towards me changed me in an instant. And wow. I knew that I had to do something because I felt trapped in that body. I didn't know how I was going to get out of there. I, all I knew was cabbage soup and slim fast personal trainer. I just, I went through the, the previous methods and it just wasn't going to work for me at this no. point. I'm in my 50s no. now. I can't go back to that. Okay. And so I, I tell everyone that uh, I feel that it's okay for me to share, okay, that um, help helped me. You know, you have to reach out for help when you need help. Yep. And I had been seeing a therapist for depression. And, you know, I'd had a relationship with her. And so when I got back home from my visit with my mom, I picked up the phone and called her. Yeah. Because I knew that it was going to start there. You know, me working through the issues that I had inside. And it was my therapist that referred me to Ideal Protein. Wow. That's awesome. Valley. Yeah. She knew that she could work with me on my inside issues. Yep. But I had to work on the outside because they were linked together. The, yeah. the way it was an outward manifestation, what was going on in the inside. And I've been to super weekends with coaches and this is stressed in their training. Yep. And you have to, you, the coaches aren't therapists, but you have to determine whether you need to make a referral. Exactly. To deal with their inner issues because they're not going to be successful in the ideal protein program unless they deal with those things and the connection with their inner issues, things like depression, like I was dealing with and, um, and the relationship with food. Yeah, that was, and that was so powerful, uh, with our last show that I did with Sonia Jones. Uh, and we, we talked about this at length with her, her relationship with her, her therapist, uh, the therapist that she actually has worked with her clients. Um, and the idea that, you know, coaching helps to, to work out and deal with the future, but counseling is what's necessary to heal and deal with your past. And if I was going to sum it up, I would say it's a serenity prayer. Mm -hmm. Accept the things you can't change, change the things that you can and ask God for the wisdom to know the difference. Yeah. I love Some, that. That kind of sums it up. Because it sure does. I can't change. But my weight, I could change that. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Fantastic. And so this is how you found Ideal Protein. She referred me to the website. So I went on the website. And I read it. And light bulbs went on. All yeah, over right. my head. Okay? <laughs> because it explain the physiology of weight loss yep. and, and connected knowledge that I already had. You know, one of, one of my fortes was in school was physiology. That's kind uh -huh. of how the body works. And I was good at that because it tells a story. So you have to know the story, you learn the story, and then you ask, answer questions about the story mm -hmm. versus anatomy which your field is like expert in that. You know that stuff cold better than I know the gist of it. I don't remember the details. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's rote memory. Yeah. So I was better at physiology. And the physiology is what Dr. Tran explained. And I knew when I read it that it was going to work for me. Yeah. Because he talked about the protein. He talked about the muscle. And when I walked into Sally Nash's office 
I already knew I was going to sign up. I went to a free seminar, you know, the free uh-huh. seminar, intro seminar. Yeah. But I knew there were other people in the room. It didn't matter. She was going to have at least one person to start. I had never heard of it before. Okay. This was my first time uh, hearing about it. Uh-huh. So I went on the website. I, I looked at the program. I looked at the closest clinic and she was the closest clinic. So I showed up at the next uh, free seminar and that's where I got started. And I tell you, God was was guiding you there, right? Sally is is she's a legend in ideal protein, at least in the DMV. Uh, just a, an incredible uh, coach. She, um, I, I, I owe her. She she helped me out of a jam when we were at a, an ideal protein conference. I was one of the few experiences I had with her, but just a wonderful, wonderful person. And I, in talking with my relationship with Sally, I really, really want to emphasize the fact that she connected with me as a person. Yeah, let's talk about that. I've had to deal with the fact, and part of my journey has been, being this person, persona of Dr. Wilson. Yeah. And we all have a work persona. But, you know, doctors, and I found out I'm not the only doctor who falls to this. No, you're not. Being Dr. Wilson all the time and not being Paul. Right. And there's a lot of Paul and Dr. Wilson, but, you know, you're supposed to turn that off and take the white jacket off and go home and be yourself. And I was so on as Dr. Wilson that I didn't spend any time um, developing relationships and uh, letting people get to know Paul. Paul. Yeah. And Sally saw through all of that. Okay. She knew that Paul was hurting and that Paul needed a friend and that Paul needed help with this problem that he was having with his weight. Um, She did not treat me like Dr. Wilson. I have learned, I learned over the years to be careful about telling people what I do for them because their attitude changes. Yeah, right. (laughs) About being a doctor. Mm-hmm. I grew up in a blue collar household. So there are no doctors in my family. But as I got into the profession and I saw how that was, it took me some years to figure that out. Why is it that people had this reaction? And it's just the way that people look at doctors. Yes. So she didn't treat me. And, and we doctors have the same problem now. Okay. Because we uh, are admonished when one of our colleagues comes to see us to treat them like our other patients because we tend to not treat them like other patients. Oh, he already knows. Oh, he should know this already. Mm-hmm. And no, oh, mm-hmm. I need a doctor wow. to be a doctor. And fortunately I have great doctors that are my doctors. And the, the other part of it that I have shared before with the coaches in the super weekends is being an African-American male. Okay. Mm-hmm. And yep. It's, it's, I've lived now 59 years in this body and there are reactions that people can have when I walk in, they don't know who I am. And I'm kind of a big guy. And it's like, I know that people react, but she didn't. She saw me as a person. Yeah. And my little radar, that little vibe, you know, I, th- at that point in my fifties, I'm pretty good at it. And she just embraced me and treated me like a person. You know, the other part that is also important to me was the judgmental attitude people have about the morbidly obese. Because I was yep. morbidly obese. I was the size of two people. Mm-hmm. And they just assume that you don't have any willpower or you're not trying or that you're lazy and uh, you don't have character. And again, she didn't see me that way. And I knew yeah. it. Pretty much immediately, the three kind of roles that I play, hats that I wear, being a doctor, being an African-American male, and being morally obese, she saw through all of that and just connected to Paul as a person. And that, you know, helped me to relax and trust and be able to, you know, discuss with her if I didn't have such a good week. Okay. Right. Right. And 
like we talked about, it allowed you to actually be open, honest, and authentic during your coaching visits, yes. uh, which is which is super important for anybody to uh, transform their life. If you just want to, eh, I'm just going to pretend, or, or just, I'm just going to lose a few pounds. Okay, great. But if you're if you really are, are looking for transformation, you need to be open and honest, and and the coach needs to put you in a place where you feel like you can trust them. Because being an ideal protein coach is more than just selling food. Yeah. That's like the tool. Okay. But yep. I don't, I won't say all, I'll say, probably say most of us. And maybe uh, uh, I can narrow it down to the morbidly obese. Maybe if somebody has to lose 25 or 30 pounds, it's significant for them. Oh, sure. I was double the size I had been. And I had a long way to go. I had a lot of weight to lose. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of internal issues that was contributing to my obesity. And so it was a lot more than just guiding me through the protocol. And yeah. you know, I appreciated her for that. And I just, just want to emphasize that, that it was more than just eat this, not that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you started with her. And uh, we, had, we also had talked about um, how the science really kind of made sense to you. And, and one of the things I did want to talk a little bit about it was uh, your nutritional education, so to speak, uh, in med school. And I, I don't understand. If you are a doctor, how could, you, how could you become overweight or obese? Aren't you taught nutrition? We are given an overview. We're given the pieces so that we can have an understanding um, overall about nutrition or understand the importance of nutrition, yeah. how important it is in a person's overall health. It's the practical application that is left out. So the analogy that I use, it's like uh, a song or music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have all the notes you can be skilled on the instrument or be skilled in singing and have all the wonderful technique you can know all the words okay you can be on pitch but there are a group of people who can take a song and have the audience in tears mm -hmm. right pull it together and it, they express something that's deep and emotional. And that's the difference. We just have the pieces, but we're not trained how to pull it together to help people to meet their goals of yeah. losing yeah. weight. And that's what Dr. Tran did. He yes. pulled it together. And when he sung, the audience cried. The audience connected to the message. And I was the audience at that time. That's yep, the experience I, I had reading the protocol. I love that when we were talking about uh, that before. It is the perfect context for it, right? It's one thing to, to know uh, what vitamins are, what minerals are, what they're supposed to do, what, what different foods, what categories they belong to. But until you can put it into context, until you can tie it all together and more that we work with this, this protocol is the brilliance of all of it is amazing. So he is quite the composer, if you will. I, I would now, you know, consider him a composer, performer, and um, we get to use his, uh, his orchestra and his song to change lives. It's just so awesome. It is. And it works from the inside out. You know, the other part that you brought up, you're carrying around that fat tank with you, but your body cannot tap into it. And that's the most uh, amazing part. That was the thing that escaped me. I, I kept racking my brain through all of my education as to how could this have happened to me? How could my metabolism have changed so much? Why can I not just eat less and exercise more and lose the fat just the way I used to when I was skinny? And, uh, you know, that was the missing piece, tapping the, the ability to re-tap into that fat. And that's what the protocol unlocks for us from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And it's straight physiology. Yeah. Well, it makes sense because 
uh, the body was designed to be anabolic. It was designed to build. It was not designed to be catabolic, to break down. So you have to manipulate it in order for it to kick it over and onto the catabolic side to break down because the fat is there for emergencies. That's the reason why you can go on a reduced calorie diet and your body pushes back. If you push it far, hard enough like I did, you won't just lose fat, you lose muscle because your body wants to preserve the fat. And that's why I was skinny fat. Yep. So uh, to go back, we're going to get back into the deep part of your story. So this for you, uh, when you had reached your peak weight, there was also another underlying factor that was uncovered during this, this time in your life, a uh, health condition that uh, you were diagnosed with. Tell us about that. When I was in my 20s, um, I first found out that I had uh, a propensity to have an elevated blood pressure when my weight was up. And one of those times that I had gained weight and I was working to lose it, you know, I had an elevated reading. It was quote unquote high normal, not in a hypertensive range, mm -hmm. but uh, enough that I needed to follow up. And of course I lost weight and then my blood pressure normalized. But when I got to my late forties and I started putting that weight on, my blood pressure went through the roof. Mm. And I'm talking about systolics at, at 220. Wow. I had no symptoms. Wow. Had, oh, that's why we call it the silent killer. I right? had zero symptoms. So I went to the doctor because they, they told us in medical school any doctor who treats himself has an idiot for a patient. <laughs> I did that. Went to the doctor and he didn't know how long I had been walking around with my blood pressure high like that. Yeah. So he had to check me out, and I found out that I was born with a bicuspid aortic valve. Uh, the aortic valve is supposed to be tricuspid or have three leaflets. Mine mm -hmm. was bicuspid, only had two. The problem with a bicuspid aortic valve is that it wears out prematurely. So I started going to the doctor regularly to get my blood pressure under control. And then I, because um, initially it took him four medicines to get my blood pressure down. So wow. uh, I started on I2 protein. I, I lost 185 pounds. My blood pressure improved, but uh, I still had to take medication. Uh, mm -hmm. I took less, but I still had to take something. And over these years that I've been through the program, the doctor's been watching me regularly. And at the end of 2019, is when I, um, when he told me it was time to uh, replace the valve, it had deteriorated. Okay. So this is two years ago. Almost, almost two years ago. It was kind almost of two years ago. 2019. Actually, I, it, I went for an evaluation for the uh, aortic valve replacement right before the pandemic hit. Gotcha. So it was like, late January, early February of 2020 okay. was when I went to confirm, I went to the specialist and confirmed that it was time to replace the valve. Because the other thing about me is that um, I had no symptoms of the abnormal valve either. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was the point. The doctor wanted me to have it replaced before I started having problems. Yep. Yep. Because I had a second problem in addition to the valve, the root of my aorta, as the aorta comes off the heart, was dilated. A dilated aortic root um, puts you at risk for aortic dissection, which is a cause of sudden death. Yeah. So yeah. with dilated aortic root, I needed to have an open heart surgery versus the one I originally thought I would be eligible for, where they feed the new valve through your groin into your heart, a cat catheterize uh, the, the heart and the valve opens up like an umbrella. They don't have to open your chest, but because of the dilated aortic root, I was recommended that I have the open procedure and do both at the same time. Wow, wow, okay. So knowing that when I was over 400 pounds, 
there would have been no way that I would have been a surgical candidate. Right. It would right. have been too high of surgical risk because knowing more as a doctor isn't necessarily a good thing. Um, because I knew what it entailed. It would entail, surge, open heart surgery would entail stopping my heart and putting me on the heart lung machine. Wow. And a 420 pound man, yeah. there's no way that they would yeah. do that. Okay. That is not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, and uh, because of the fact that I had greatly improved my nutrition through the ideal protein program, I did well postoperatively in terms of recovering from my surgery. So, so yeah, so this is something that I, I want to stress uh, with all of our viewers and listeners. Um, you know, number one, having accomplished the weight loss that you accomplished by doing the program, that actually made you a candidate for the surgery. Mm -hmm. But it's one thing to be a candidate for the surgery. It's another thing to actually go through and recover from the surgery. And so tell us about that, about how was your recovery? What, it it was not easy, but I recovered like on schedule. Yeah, yeah. And the days immediately following the surgery, you can't use your upper extremities, you know, and uh, because you know I had the big incision down the center of my chest. Yeah. So you, have to, in order to be able to stand, at first I couldn't even stand on my own. I was so mm -hmm. weak, yeah. but in order to stand, you have to use your legs. And I had a pillow to hug and I had mm -hmm. to learn how to rock and stand up. Oh my God, that would have been possible at 400 pounds. Nope. And the fact that I had started exercising, walking and riding my bike and swimming. Um, and the fact that I preserved my muscle. <laughs> yeah weight in the form of body fat and I had muscle, I was able to begin that process of learning how to stand and, and walking and the rehab that I went through, which entailed exercise and walking on a treadmill. And, and when I was cleared to do some upper body work, I had the muscle mass in order to exercise so that the main muscle that needed to recover my heart my surgery was about five or six hours now. My yeah, heart was stopped yeah. for quite a long time. Wow. So it had to recover, right? So I went through cardiac rehab and I had to use the rest of me in order to exercise my heart. You know, you wear a monitor in rehab and you have to um, get your heart in the target heart rate when you're doing the cardio portion. And mm -hmm. they slowly increase you to increase your stamina and your endurance. And so that was critical in my recovery. The other part, again, was the healing of the tissues, the healing of my heart, the healing of my chest wall, which had to mend uh, because I changed how I eat. You know, I don't eat a bunch of junk food. Or, right. You know, I eat my two vegetables twice a day. You know, I have my supplements. I drink the water. And it, the protein, which is just feel. so important, right? Another thing that we stress, it's not just muscles, it's organs, it's glands, it's DNA, it's RNA, everything that's important in your body made of protein. And that's why we prioritize protein both in the weight loss phase as well as in our maintenance phase, in our lifestyle. It's so, so, so important. My relationship with food changed. And it is true that for me, food became my medicine. You know, yeah. when I got out, when I first got out of the hospital, I was taking 10 medicines. I never took so much medicine in my life. I don't take quite as many now. I'm off five of them. Okay. Wow. And one of the ones yep. I take is the aspirin. I have to take the rest of my life. But, you know, I, uh, it, it was medicine. It was critical in my recovery, you know, from this major surgery. Yeah. So, yeah. Now that I filled in the details of my story, it's not so melodramatic. It's saved my life. 
Absolutely. The of the oh, 100%. You know, it, was, it was more than the weight that I lost, although that was critical. It was my lifestyle change where I was exercising, I was fit because when I tell people I've had open heart surgery, the first thing they think of is that I had heart disease. You know, that I had maybe a heart attack and I had clogged right. arteries from my heart, yep. my cardiac arteries, that I had a vein taken out of my leg and put up in my heart. I did do not have heart disease. Okay. Right. Yep. I my cardiac arteries were clean because I had a cardiac nice. catheterization the day before my procedure because your coronary arteries are attached to your aortic root. So the surgeon had to detach my coronary arteries and attach oh them to my, God. to my new parts. Wow. So he had to know what he was dealing with, whether it was plaque or blockages. Totally clean, okay? Oh, that's to my doctors and I do protein because yep. I changed before I developed heart disease. Wow. And so that's, that's crazy. What's critical. Oh, yeah, I don't have heart disease. I just have a new valve. Yeah, that's awesome. So my heart is, was very healthy. You know, that is amazing. I, well, and the other thing that I, the other thing I've been waiting for you to say too, that I thought was so poignant uh, in our pre interviews was um, basically you've had your normal life expectancy restored through this program. That was the other thing that I mentioned a few minutes ago about being a doctor and knowing more. Yeah. Okay. Knowing, knowing too much. <laughs> knowing too much. Okay. And um, I know that if I do protein hadn't come into my life, my life would have been shortened. I would have developed heart disease because you have valves in your heart for a reason. <laughs> so your heart can function properly and do its job. Well, my valve was deteriorated. A valve does two things. It opens and it closes. Mine didn't either. Mine mm -hmm. didn't open all the way, so the opening was narrowed. So my heart would have to work harder to pump through that narrowed opening. And it wasn't closing because the, it's yeah. supposed to close so the heart can fill up with fresh blood to prepare for the next beat. But I had backwash. Yeah. So it, regurgitation is what a technical term for it. So my heart would have been damaged if there had been any more delay, who knows, all right? Because I know it would have happened. If I had to present it to that valve specialist at 420 pounds, he would have said, you're not a candidate for this. Yes, and he right. And would have referred me to a bariatric surgeon for a, some kind of surgical procedure for weight loss. How long would that have taken? Yeah, yeah, you right. Know, that what would, and that would be if you were in a crisis heart? situation, yeah. Damage to my heart, it would have taken years off of my life. So I know this. Yeah. Okay. And I, uh, again, am forever grateful to Dr. Tran and the Ida Protein Program and my coach Sally and all the wonderful people I've met in the Ida Protein community that have just changed my life and helped yeah. me restore my normal life expectancy. So let's do that. Let's let's go through your weight loss. We do have some pictures and some things that we've put together to kind of chronicle that journey. And I've got this great picture um, that I love of you in the Sally. clinic. Yep. And then uh, talk to us about your lab coat that you're wearing in these pictures. I was at a free seminar doing kind of a guest appearance that Sally asked me to do. So I had taken my lab coat that uh, I was given to wear at work to show that I used to fill that coat out. Yeah. Actually, I couldn't button the buttons because I it wouldn't close. I think it's the biggest that coat this, they had. It's such a dramatic the, picture. She has my before. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, when, when I do it, I do it. It seems to be extreme, but, you know, <laughs> I, I did have dramatic weight loss at a younger with these diets, but then I had extreme mm -hmm. dramatic weight. So, so then the other the story that I, the other mm -hmm. story I really love is when you reached your hundred pound weight loss milestone, uh, you gave yourself a, a reward. Talk to us about, uh, what was this reward that we're showing here on the screen? That's my convertible. 
Um, I started Ideal Protein Phase 1 in January Oh, I lost you from the feed. January what? Uh, 2016. This um, picture in the middle, the, uh, January 2016, and the picture in the middle uh, was July 2016. And, wow. Uh, I was probably about 100 pounds down six months in. Wow. Wow. And so if you, know, you can look, you can see I was probably like low 300s in that picture. But I knew I could fit in the convertible uh -huh. at that point. So that picture was taken by the, yeah. the young man who sold the car to me. <laughs> oh, that's and awesome. You and know then what, the though, picture on again, top. 100 pounds is 100 pounds. Yeah, I I knew that nope, I lost you again. it was time for me to live in my life. I think it's the wind blowing. Uh, the joys I, of the road. I knew it was time to start. I knew it was time to start my new life. Yeah. So I, I, I went car shopping and bought the convertible. So I love these, this string of pictures that we've put together here that represent some non-scale victories for you. Um, you know, maybe instead of a number that you had put out there as, uh, for your weight loss goal, as the indication that you had reached goal, you had a little different idea. Talk to us about that. Initially, I set a weight loss goal that was not realistic, given I was over 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. And my coach, being the great coach that she is, kind of redirected me <laughs> uh -huh. to a more reasonable weight loss goal. So as, as I got closer and closer to the goal that she set that was more realistic, I said, oh, okay, I have this jacket hanging up in my closet because, again, I didn't wear out clothes because I never stayed this size very long. Yeah, right. So <laughs> but you kept them. You saved them. Clothes, and this the jacket on the left, um, I said – when I can button this jacket, because it's a three-button jacket, then I'm done, because I'm the same size. But I'm somewhere between 20 to 25 pounds heavier than I was when I last wore that jacket, okay. because I'm older now. Okay. And um, I had to change my mind about it. Yep. Is that noise? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can hear what's going on there. <laughs> oh, we got a special guest star. Oh, there we go. Okay. Whew. The air conditioner kicked on because oh, it's geez. getting warmer outside. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. So I... um. So yeah, that I, jacket. I, I was done. I was done with phase one because I was able to get in that jacket. Yeah, that's awesome. And then the tuxedo story. Tell us the, the tuxedo, tuxedo story. Uh, uh, on the right, uh, I'm wearing the same tuxedo. Okay, the picture in the middle is May of 2017. I attended my 30 year reunion from medical school. Uh huh. And I stopped by Sally's office on the way to the reunion to show her me and my tuxedo. I think that's I, so cool. Which I purchased in 1991 at the insistence of my wife, who said, oh, it's, it's, it's you know, a piece of clothing you wear and, you know, you'll get a lot of wear out of it, you know, because it was expensive. And I wore it to my sister's wedding. That's my sister 
and uh -huh. my older brother. And that was 1991. That's the year I turned 30. That's awesome. And it's been hanging up in my closet all this time. Yeah. 16 years. What am I saying? 26 no. years. Yeah. 26 years between. Uh, and yeah. I, my wife was right. I it, it was it did it lasted. That's so <laughs> I got so that great. Again. So yeah, um, that was a big, big deal. It and was. I, I love the fact that you stopped by Sally's office to show her because I'm you know, those are the things as coaches that uh, we live for. I just think that that's an amazing, amazing memory. Yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, this kind of looks like the shirt you're wearing right now. Tell but us I, about I, this, I, this shirt. I showed you when I turned off the air conditioner. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, my story of these wide fluctuations in my weight and having clothes that have lasted so the one on the left is my son, Paul, who's 24 now. So that was 20 years ago. Uh -huh. Probably. A, uh, uh, so that was 20 years ago, right? Early okay. 2000s, maybe not that long ago. But the point is that I'm the size again. Yeah. Okay. And then the picture on the right was taken at a seminar at Sally's office on sugar addiction. And the gentleman there is a patient of mine who lost over a hundred pounds on ideal protein. And, and how, I gotta say, you know, how rewarding is that to, uh, to have patients that have made that journey as well now? Well, the thing was that, uh, when he heard my story, yeah, it was his story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, most of us have the same or similar story. And so um, he connected yeah. with Sally, connected, started on protocol, and these, these are the results. And that's why we're doing this. That's, that's why I, I created this show. Um, that's what we talked about before we pressed the record button on this is, you know what, we all think that our story is, is just unique to us. And, you know, the more people that we talk to, the more people we touch, everybody has very similar stories. And so I'm hoping that someone's going to hear this and it's going to, it's going to create a transformation for someone else. Yes. I mean, that's the connection with ideal protein. Hey, here's a really great slide that that I've got for you. Now, again, talking about sharing a connection and um, being so proud of other people who have taken the journey. Talk to us about these beautiful ladies. These are my children. Uh, Rebecca, who's on the right in the, fir in the first photo. Renata, my middle daughter. And then my son, Paul. Yeah. Uh, that was taken on a trip that we made to Hawaii. Um, in 2017, uh -huh. uh, I celebrated Renata's graduation from college. Okay. And then the picture on the right, same three people in 2019. After yeah. both of my girls each lost 85 pounds on ideal protein with Sally's help. Oh, so wonderful. Yes, it was very transformative. They were inspired by dad. So they took their own journeys. Oh, it's amazing. Um, and, and very impactful on their lives and or possibly their careers. You shared a story with me. I do want, I'd love for you to share with everyone. Well, I'm old for three. None of my children want to be doctors. <laughs> all their degrees are in the arts. Uh, and so my, my oldest daughter, Rebecca, um, she, her degree is in uh, theater education. So she is an actor and um, she went to uh, Howard University uh, uh, for her undergraduate degree, but went to uh, NYU in New York for her graduate degree. Wow. Pretty prestigious. You know, a lot of yeah. graduated from NYU. She was star truck people, star starstruck people walking on campus, famous people walking on campus. Oh my gosh. I can't even imagine. Yes. And, um, 
So uh, she's a very talented young lady and uh, it's been in her since she was a little girl. And so uh, she was cast in different plays when she was in grad school. She was cast in on-campus productions. Um, and then when she finished grad school, we saw her in a couple of off-off Broadway, but still Broadway, uh, production uh -huh. small venues when she was heavier. And she was always cast as either a nun or the mother in her 20s. Yep. Oh, wow. Yep. And that was how people saw her. And that's how she was cast. After she lost the weight, the first production we saw her in in New York, she was cast as the slut. Uh, <laughs> talk about a role reversal. <laughs> Total role reversal. Okay. And now she started, she started out her uh, education as a dancer. And okay. Through that and being needed to transition over to theater is what contributed to her weight gain. Okay, mm. so you know she had been this size before, kind of like her dad, up and down with her weight. Right, right. And so, um, so she's a trained dancer. So when uh, they cast her, they saw that she had training, so they paired her up with the dance captain. So the whole cast had choreography, but the um, you know, the two of them had more advanced choreography. Yeah, which included lifts, and Rebecca wasn't used to being lifted. Okay, and it was just a, a new experience for her. Wow, you know, to be lifted, and yeah. it just was transformative. So she's uh, pursuing it, and you know, she's uh, you know, it's a rough road. But, you know, she's encouraged and she's living the ideal protein lifestyle and is actually um, doing remote um, coaching with my current coach because my coach Sally retired. Gotcha. So she's doing remote right. coaching with my coach Stephanie, who's yeah. really been helping her, you know, to, to, to tune up. Yeah. And it, again, it's just, it's amazing that uh, it, it did give her the ability to unlock and use those talents and abilities that she wasn't using before. I, I, that's one of the parts I really, really love. Um, as a dad, mm -hmm. as a dad, I might rather have her as a mother or, or a nun, though. Right. <laughs> her cast made apologize to me after the play uh, <laughs> about certain scenes that they had. But, you know, I was like, that was Tanya. Not Rebecca. That was Tanya, the the, the, the her role. character, her character yeah. name, right? right. Yep. Not Rebecca, she <laughs> played the role. I just, I understood that, but that's the thing about society. Again, connecting to the things that I shared earlier about people's perception of a, a person that's overweight and struggling with their weight. Yeah, but they're not trying, or they're um, you know not don't have any willpower. The issue is we've been going about it the wrong way. Yep. It's not like yep. a truck. <laughs> it's not. It's not your fault, right? No, and it's that's not. that's one of the things that I love about uh, how we coach people and and the education process through the program. It's not your fault. We've been taught wrong. We, we we didn't understand what was going on, and that's what's so great about this program because now we've now we thoroughly understand it. Right. Right. We get it. Yeah. All right. Let's bring this to a close. And I, I want to, Oh, a couple other things. Uh, who are these characters you're clowning around with this friends <laughs> that I met? They also have wonderful success stories on the idea protein protocol. Yeah. Uh, I call her Miss Lynn because she's such a grand lady. She and is a grand lady. Who, yes. Who is a character. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, and I, I think that when you look at their videos, uh, it really captures who they are as people. Yep. But then when you actually meet them in person, you're still blown away. They're just wonderful people and wonderful yes. human beings. I have such a heart for uh, those of us that struggle and wanted to reach out and help. And I know that they're both coaches. Yeah, they're wonderful coaches. And yeah, that was us on the right uh, pl uh, playing. That's me out of my comfort zone trying to, yeah. <laughs> trying to be silly 
some pretty deserved guy, you know. Yeah, they drew it out of me. <laughs> uh, yeah, they they have both of them have a way of doing that, right? Yeah, you know, it was it was so neat when we met. Um, it was that Dallas Super Weekend uh, that is so legendary in my heart. And uh, to see the three of you together, uh, to, to actually, I believe that might have been the premiere of Toonie's video. Um, not a dry eye in the, in the house. Oh, it's um, a tear. <laughs> oh, my God. And uh, But yeah, all three of you are just such great ambassadors f for the Ideal Protein Program. And I can't wait until uh, we can travel again, we can all get back together. I have the, uh, I have the uh, honor of having Lynn in my office two days a week coaching clients for us. And, and that's great. But, uh, and I get to, to talk to Tooney from time to time by zoom, but I'd love to get all of us back in a room together. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. So this last slide we have put together gives people the, uh, the exterior context for your rolling studio, if you will, that is down parked in Myrtle beach. Um, tell us a bit about this, uh, this RV. Well, it's a class B RV, meaning that it is uh, in a van that's converted to a fully self-contained unit. Okay. So this particular segment of the RV industry is very popular right now because it's compact and uh, you can park it in a parking lot. You can park it in front of your house where it's parked there in the picture. And it has all the amenities of the big rigs. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually sitting in the back, uh, in the bench area that converts to a bed. Mm -hmm. and, um, it is my new lifestyle that I want to pursue. Um, and I'm really enjoying it because with all the weight that I lost, you know, now I can actually fit in it. Yeah. It's that was a huge deal for you. you. You couldn't have been able to do this, your former self, right? I we be standing in uh, the aisle, which is right behind me. Uh, uh -huh. There was no way for me to turn around in it. And the bathroom is pretty small. One of the things that people don't necessarily like about class B's, but I can fit in it. Yeah. Okay? And that was a major, major uh, step for me where I could see myself in it and then fulfill that dream because I've always dreamed of owning a motorhome and we had travel trailers and did RVing when my children were growing up. But now that they're all grown, you know, now I can move on to the motorhome and this is definitely a fulfillment of a dream. Yeah. And, um, uh, I really um, am enjoying the lifestyle and have plans to uh, drive my convertible on the uh, West Coast Highway Maybe next summer I'm going to buy a trailer to tow oh, with wow. my van and put my car on it and drive across country. That's Head across it. country. Woo. I want to see the Grand Canyon. Yeah. And, you know, those are my two, number one and two things on my bucket list. Love that. I'm going to figure out how to take my bike with me, too. Um, mm -hmm. And I have it with me here. So I've been riding. Around oh, that's the great. So it's been great. It's really, uh, really a beautiful uh, campground. So I'm enjoying that. So it's all new uh, for me to uh, ex what my mom would say, expand my horizons. And uh, it's all things that at one point I we could say that I didn't think was possible. Right. But the weight loss with through the Audio Protein Program has made it possible. And I'm Absolutely. living. That's so awesome. That is such a such a fantastic uh, vision of of what life possible means to you and and could mean for other people. All right, Paul. Thank you so so much for your time again. I especially I especially thank you for taking this time during your vacation. Well, this was the best time I think. Yeah, it was it was nice. You probably wouldn't have had the opportunity or, uh, to spend as much time with us preparing, et cetera. Um, so I'm so glad that this worked out. And uh, uh, like I said, I, I look forward to a time where we can hang out together. You know, again, you're just in Maryland, and I I blame myself for not calling you up because we've we have other conversations that we were going to catch back up on from Dallas. So. <laughs>
This is the beginning. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, so you go back out there and enjoy the weather, enjoy the beach. And, uh, like I said, we will be in touch. Thank you so much for spending this time and, uh, keep living your life possible. You okay. hang, hang, ba hang back in the studio. I'm going to wrap the show up and we'll, we'll finish talking. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Paul Wilson, what an amazing show. Uh, what an amazing person. Everybody who meets him loves him. And uh, I, I hope that now you feel like you've met him as well. Uh, very open, very authentic, and uh, sharing some things that, that can be hard to share, um, especially as a doctor. And I thought that that was very neat, the way that uh, he contrasts his, his life as Dr. Paul versus his life as Paul. Um, hopefully people will connect uh, with parts of his story and, and start pursuing their life possible. So as always, uh, please like, share, subscribe to uh, the podcast. We are on video both in Facebook and YouTube. And I am also the audio version of the show is on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and other places where you might get your podcasts. Um, I'm working on future shows. Uh, and I'm, I'm not, not yet ready to tell you who our next guest is going to be, but darn it anyhow, they're going to be amazing because all of these people have been. So until we meet again, keep pursuing your life possible. <laughs>